Hi everybody, Nathan Hale here with a, uh, a quick correction video. Um, working on Hazardous Tales number 10, uh, the Cold War Correspondent, and uh, have a really small throwaway panel. This is just this, this panel right here in the center of the screen. We are, uh, we have a bunch of people who are heading out to, uh, our, our reporters are headed to the flagship so that they can radio their uh, their stories back to their uh, newspapers. They can send them out, get them on the wire, so they can get published. Um, so for this uh, quick segment, I've already done a huge, complicated um, amphibious landing at Incheon Harbor. Huge, complicated thing with millions of ships and everything. And in this one tiny little panel, all they have to do is get from uh, the shore where they've done the, the big Incheon landing, back out to the flagship which is out in the water um, so this is a tiny panel as you can see right here there are f uh, four four busy panels in this row lots going on but I wanted to get our people from being here on land to being on the flagship and the flagship is called the uh, the USS Mount McKinley it is uh, an amphibious assault command ship um, so they had to find a boat um, and have the boat take them out to the flagship. Um, and I just have one little scene to draw to communicate that. So I had to look for um, what I assumed was uh, what's called like a, a tender, tender boat, um, where you go through the side of the ship in uh, like a, a bay door or an operation door, sort of something like this, something quick and easy to draw, you know, that's closer down to the waterline so they don't have to get, you know, hauled all the way up or something. So, you know, I'm doing lots of, of online research trying to find uh, good doors or things like this. Now, I was not using the research I had previously done for the exterior of the ship because I just drew this thing quick. You know, when you have this many pages of history stuff, you're not going to be able to find reference for everything. You just you look as best as you can and then you know you sometimes you just kind of take a leap of faith that there's some sort of bay door operation type of thing on the side of the flagship and then you open up your reference to draw the rest of the ship and you see as clear as day a ladder on the side you see that well not as clear as day as grainy as an old uh navy photo from 1962 um, this is called a, uh, what's the name of this ladder? It has a special name. Um, this is called an accommodation ladder. There you go, there's your naval term for the day. That is permanently fixed to the side of the boat right there. It raises up and lowers down. Not only that, can you see it clear as day there? Huh, oh, you can see it clear as day here. Now that I've seen it with my own eyeballs, I can't send this out into the world. We've got to correct it before it even goes in the book. So, time to get rid of my fictional tender door here on the side of the USS Mount McKinley. Kind of select it all with my lasso tool. Recently I've made the switch from uh, Photoshop to Clip Studio Pro, which some of you may know as Manga Studio Pro, um, for a couple of reasons, but just mostly because it's, it's a little more comics friendly. There's still a lot that I do in Photoshop when I do the layer of color. I'll switch back to Photoshop. Um, it's also, Photoshop's much better for text editing. It just makes the text look better. Um, but there's a lot I really like about um, Manga Studio, not the least of which is this crazy little tiny thing. It's like a, it's like a little Nintendo joystick that you can put all of your hotkeys to that, I, uh, that only works with Clip Studio. Um, and so I don't even have to touch the keyboard. I can switch everything out by just using this little uh, Nintendo controller type thing. Okay, so let's do this accommodation ladder. Now they're not going to be right up against the side of the ship either, so I need to put them out into the water level a bit too. So let's go to the, the sketch layer here and just erase the sketch all the way out. Uh, these are just this is this is why it would be so much easier to write history instead of having to draw the history all the time because you have to look all of this stuff up. 
Um, if I was just writing the text, I would say they took a ship and they boarded the flagship. Well, you have to show this boarding operation, and sometimes that can be more complicated than you thought it was. I did uh, once go on a cruise where you got to um, take tender boats in. I guess what this type of uh, tendering is what they call it, loading from a small boat onto a large ship, um, is really for when the big ship can't get into port has to stay out in deep water. Um, so let's see again how low down. See, it looks like it does. It goes right down. Probably pretty dicey there when you have to make that transfer up. Um, so we'll have our, our characters saying there's already uh, our, our guy on the ship here saying, "Hey, we've got too many uh, correspondents on the boat already on the ship." Um, all right, so. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So I'll go back and draw the waterline. It's always weird drawing the waterline on these on the on a big vessel because you want to make the vessel look massive. Um, and usually, big heavy things have very straight lines at the bottom. But if it's a if it's a if it's a sitting in the water, then you have to add that waterline in. I do really enjoy drawing water. I know not everybody does, but I. I like drawing it. I like the way the the bubbles and everything go. Uh, switching over to the straight line tool here. For, oh, let me erase erase some of the sides of the ship out here. But um, uh, I don't know if anybody reading the book will have had personal experience with the USS Mount McKinley and say, "Oh, that has a, an accommodation ladder on the side, not a." Uh, not a, a, a mission bay, operations bay, whatever, side doors like that. This guy's got it all wrong. Got to make sure everything is right. That straight line tool makes life a little easier. I don't use it for everything. Ooh, I don't, I'm not happy about that. But um, I do, when it's something like metal stairs coming down, you don't want that to look too rickety. Oh, is that looking rickety? Maybe a little bit. But now we know how they would have gotten up into the Mount McKinley on an accommodation ladder. Uh, kind of tricky when you think about all the trouble you have to go to to get from a from a big ship to shore uh, in 1950 in a war zone. But it would have been something like this. Now I could probably try and figure out a really deep dive as to what type of tendering boat they would have down here but I just this is it's just a generic army boat that's what that is <laughs> so I apologize to uh, any uh, Navy professionals out there who know exactly what kind of a tendering boat would get you to an amphibious assault landing craft in 1950 um, I'm just gonna say it's a little little boat like that uh, there we go. I said army boat I apologize I mean Navy boat so this is a big amphibious thing, so there are plenty of Army and Navy folks involved, lots of Marines, all kinds of, every, everybody's involved in this big Inchon operation. Okay, so we can kind of see it hovering above the water there. There we go. And, you know, it's, it's hard not to make sound effects. You can, uh, when, when a boat's just idling out there, you can, you know, in my mind, I'm hearing that engine bubbling and you can see you know smell the gas fumes everybody trying to do their whole thing right here so let's get my sailor here who is has come down uh, and I don't know how this would work would they lower it and then raise it again would it just stay down the whole time if lots of uh, boats were coming and going I don't know how it works it's just for this one panel and you know really I could just ignore it and move on but when you have um, reference that completely contradicts what you've drawn well you gotta fix it plus this you know now now we know now we know how they would have gotten on board with this accommodation ladder it looks like stairs to me but I've learned in researching it that it's called an accommodation ladder uh, all right there we go erase that out there we go we have now taken a, a mistake an error in, uh, in how I thought this happened, and we have now made it more historically accurate. You guys will read this panel in uh, about 0.9 seconds and be on to the next panel. Oops, there we go. Um, 
Here we go. Ugh. The sailor's face is literally the size of an O in my text, so I don't know why I'm wasting so much energy on it. All right, because I don't want it to look weird. Here we go. Usually when I make these videos, I uh, record the drawing and then narrate over it. But since this was a quick fix, I thought we could we could show it live. Okay. I think we now have the correct way to board the USS Mount McKinley. Let's take one last look at, uh, at our reference photos here and see if we are happy with it. Yeah. Oh, there's a looks like there's a long cable attached to it. Do we see that on the other one? We do. All right, we got to draw that cable in. Uh, that makes sense. That would probably be how you raise and lower this thing. It didn't look like it was fully taut, um, so we'll just keep it a little loosey-goosey there. Uh, all right, that's how you do it. Still looks like a pretty dicey operation. You probably really get a good, uh, got to be careful on there. You get trapped between the uh, accommodation ladder and your boat and pinch your arm or leg off or something. Um, anyway, okay, there we go, all fixed up, and back to work. Thanks for watching, everybody. Book 11, Cold War Correspondent, comes out in October. Check it out. Have a good one, everybody. Talk to you later. Oops.